Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on operating system preventive maintenance. I'm James Messer, and I'll be your host through this module where we're going to discuss how we can learn more about operating system preventive maintenance coming from our CompTIA Essentials exam 220-601, section 3.4, where we need to learn how to perform preventive maintenance on operating systems. And we're going to go through some of those common utilities today. I'm going to show you how they work. Also, in the 220-602 exam, section 3.4, almost exactly the same naming and numbering here. Uh, one of the things that is different between the two is the 602 exam expects you to go farther into the process, not just know what the process is, but how to do it. So we're going to do both of those things in this particular module. We're going to go through software updates, learning how to keep your system up to date through Windows updates and through service packs. We're also going to talk about backups. We really can't talk about backups enough. So this is a great place to do it in our preventive maintenance section. And we're going to also talk about restore points, which can really get you out of a jam in certain situations. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. Let's start with software updates. Windows has a process of updating itself that is not only extremely important, it's really, really important. Keeping your operating system up to date not only affects the reliability of your system and keeps it up and running longer, but it's also important because there are a number of security updates that come out every month from Microsoft, sometimes even more recent than that. You might get an update and not every month, but every twice a month or three times a month. Microsoft will release these updates whenever there is a pending problem, something that's really important for you to upgrade your system on. And they do normal updates once a month on the first Tuesday of the month. And that's really important to keep in mind because your system needs to have the latest security patches on it to stay up and running so nobody else can get into your system and do things that you don't want them to do. This is usually integrated into the security policy in most large organizations. Most organizations have a process when that Tuesday update comes out, they go through a testing phase, and then on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or the next week, you get an update that's pushed automatically to your desktop where they've tested internally and made sure that it's going to run with the operating system and the applications that you're using in your environment, and they'll push it out and make sure that all of your systems continue to run. There's a lot of testing that goes on every month when they're updated. Now, if you're at home, you might want to do it a little bit faster. You might want to first be sure that you're on a protected network behind a router, behind a firewall on your home network, and then make sure if you're ever taking your machine out somewhere else or a laptop that you are up to date with the latest patches. This is not always a foolproof process. As I mentioned, whenever these large organizations get these patch updates, they go through a testing process. And the reason they do that is because occasionally these patches can actually break something. And we don't want to have that happen in a large environment. You really don't even want to have that happen in your home environment. So you want to be sure that you always have backups available. We're going to talk about more about backups in this prevent a maintenance module. But this is something before you perform any type of operating system update, before you do anything major to your operating system, make sure that you have a backup. Always something to keep in mind whenever you're doing something that major. Microsoft also releases something called service packs. These are released once a year, once every 18 months or so. They are a roll up first of all of those security patches that came down the line. So if you happen to miss some, you're starting with a brand new machine, you just installed the operating system, you can install the latest service pack and you'll get a lot of different patches all in one fell swoop. It makes it very, very quick and easy to install an operating system and at least get it to a point that it's not so old with its security patches. And it's very easy to incrementally update. Occasionally, in a service pack, there will be new features there. This doesn't happen very often. Windows XP Service Pack 1 was a very good example of this. The XP Service Pack 1 released a number of enhancements for wireless networking. Those enhancements made Windows XP work a lot better on wireless networks. It doesn't usually include new features. It's very uncommon. And that's because there's a lot of testing that has to go underway. You're changing operating system components. The manufacturer really has to have a pressing need to be able to update and add those new features, wireless networking was a very good reason to do that. But you don't often get new features in a service pack. The service pack may be integrated with your installation media. So look at the upgrade XP service pack or whatever CD-ROM came with your system. And it'll say on it, Windows XP service pack 1 or SP2 or SP3. It'll have listed on the CD 
what service pack is integrated into the operating system. So you'll know that you, when you install it from that installation media, you'll know you at least have that version available and running whenever you get everything installed. You may still have to update new service packs that came along after that installation media, but at least you're that far along in the in installation process. You don't have to go so far back with that. Throughout the certification program, I talk a lot about you needing to have backups. Whenever you perform any major update to your system, before you integrate a new service pack, have a backup available. Well, you don't ever want to be in a situation where you've lost data, you've lost your pictures, you've lost videos, or your operating system is no longer functioning because you didn't have a backup that would work properly. Now, fortunately, Windows includes a backup system in the operating system. So you don't need anything extra to get this running. The Windows backup can be started by typing NT backup from the run command, or you can find it under start, all programs, accessories, system tools, and backup. Now, if you're running Windows XP Home, that does not come automatically installed in Windows XP Home. You have to install it from the CD, but it is still available to you to use. You just have to go through the installation process and install that from your installation media. Let me run you through the Windows Backup program and give you a feel for what that looks like. Here's our Windows XP desktop. And as I mentioned, we can start the backup program by clicking your start command, clicking run, and typing in NT backup. And if we hit enter, then the NT backup program, it's still called NT from its old Windows NT days. But this is the Windows XP backup or restore wizard. It starts up in this wizard mode by default. I also mentioned another way that you could get to it if we cancel that. We can go to start under programs, under accessories. Under our system tools, there's an option for backup. And if we click that option, it takes you to the same screen, launches the same program. So two different ways to get there. You may be asked on your exam, how do you start the backup or restore wizard? Those are the two ways you can go about doing that. And you can see there's an advanced mode to do this. I'm going to go through the wizard mode so you can see what that's like. And then we'll look at the advanced mode afterwards. If we step through the wizard and click Next, it says, what do you want to do? Do you want to back up or do you want to restore? Let's say we'd like to back up our files and our settings. One of the options that you have is to back up all of your documents. So if you're storing everything in the My Documents folder, this is an easy way to back up and make sure that you have all of your videos and all of your music and all of your pictures. And you can easily back up just the things specific to you and your documents. Or this may be a machine that everybody in your family uses. Maybe there are more than one person logs on to this device, and you'd like to back up everybody's systems. This will back up everybody's My Documents folder. You may just want to say back up everything, back up the operating system, back up the entire system, and create a system recovery disk. That way, if tomorrow something happens to this machine, you can load up your system recovery disk, reboot your machine, and reinstall the entire operating system and everything that was on here all from scratch, and everything is protected. Very easy, one-click way to do that. Let's choose Next, and you'll get a feel for what that looks like. It tells you where you'd like to save your backup. On my system, I only have an A drive, but I could plug in one of those great USB external hard drives. Those come in really handy. Plug one of those in, and that'll be where you want to save your backup. And then you can name this backup, give it a date and time, give it a name that's descriptive, and it will begin the backup process. Now, what I'd like to do is restart the backup process but I'd like to show you the advanced mode. Let's go to our advanced mode view. This is what the backup utility will usually look like in the advanced mode. We can go through the backup wizard, the restore wizard, or our automated system recovery wizard. So if you have one of those floppy disks that has that automated floppy uh, system setting view, we can grab that and do our installation from there, our backup. There's the backup tab that tells you exactly what you would like to back up. Notice you can be very specific with this. You can choose exactly which drives, exactly which folders you'd like to back it up. Or maybe if you're performing a restore, you could do your restore from here as well. And maybe this is something that you'd like to have happen when you're not using the machine. You go to sleep at night, have it do its backup automatically. So you could set up a schedule that says at any particular time of the day, on a particular night, on a weekend, you can have this just start the process and it will back these things up for you automatically. So once you schedule this, it's really hands off. If your USB backup drive is always connected, it makes it very easy for you to have every night an update of all of your recent files and your, your folders and the information that's important to you. So take advantage of this Windows backup utility. Very simple to back up, very easy to restore, and it doesn't require any additional software or anything else to 
to buy, it comes integrated in your Windows operating system. Another capability that Windows has built into it is something called a restore point. A restore point isn't a backup. It's more of a micro backup or a mini backup. It's something just in case you're working with your system and you perform a function and it causes a problem. This might be the situation where you're installing a new driver and the new driver actually has a bug or a problem with it and now your system isn't working the way you would want it to work anymore. You're now, you've updated your audio driver and now you're not hearing any sounds you kind of like to take that back. You kind of like to restart it back to where it was yesterday where everything was working properly. Fortunately, the restore point process within Windows is a way that you can have that take place. You can find this system restore functionality under Start, All Programs, Accessories, System Tools, System Restore. Let's have a look at System Restore and see what's involved with that. We're back to my Windows desktop. I'll click Start. We'll click Programs. Go into our Accessories folder under System Tools. And inside there is an option called System Restore. And the little tab that comes up says that this restores our system to a chosen restore point. Let's look and see what a restore point is. Whenever you do anything major to your system, it creates a restore point. If you install a new driver, if you install a new application, if you do anything major like that to your operating system, Windows is smart enough to create a new restore point. Now you may want to create a restore point manually. You could certainly come into here and tell it that right now at this very moment, create a restore point because I might do something in the next hour or so when I'm tinkering around with things that might create a problem I'd like to restore back to this point. Or you can restore your computer to an earlier time. Let me click the next button and give you a feel for what that is. So if you have a, a click on a calendar, it brings up a nice calendar of the different dates and times. And you can see as you move things backward in time, there are different restore points available depending on what you've done on your operating system. You have, may have multiples for time frames. Uh, during an entire day, you may have three or four or five or more depending on what you happen to do on your system during that time frame. And generally, system the system Windows XP schedules and automatically creates a restore point every day. And as I mentioned, there are others that are created by other things that you do. So if there's a certain restore point you'd like to go back to, you could choose that restore point and Windows will then begin the process of reverting back to the way your system configuration was during that time. This doesn't change any of your documents. It doesn't change any of the files that you might have added. It doesn't take away anything that's happened during that time frame. All of the music that you've downloaded in that time frame, all the pictures that you've put on your hard drive, any documents that you may have created remain on your hard drive. It doesn't remove those. What it does change is the system configuration for your system during that time frame. So the restore points become very useful. Now, one thing that you'll be often asked for is when there is a virus or, or spyware that's on your system. We'll talk more about this in our security section. But restore points don't really help in that scenario. Restore points are stored in a certain part of your system. And viruses and spyware are smart enough to go back to all of your restore points and also embed themselves in your restore points. So this isn't a great security tool to back up and get your system more secure. But it does help you whenever there's a hardware problem, a driver problem, or configuration change that you've done to your operating system that just isn't working well anymore. So keep that in mind as you go through using restore points. But boy, they can really save you if you happen to run into problems. In review of our operating system preventive maintenance, we've gone through a description of how you would do your Windows updates and our service packs. We've also talked a bit about performing backups and certainly looking at restore points, which has saved me on more than one occasion. Hopefully, you'll find it just as useful when you're working in your Windows XP system. If you'd like to see many more of our hours and hours of free a videos, visit our message boards or participate in our wiki, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.